The election is less than a month away. The various campaigns are lawyering up for potential challenges, litigation that may come after the November 3rd election. In fact, Nancy Pelosi is uh, uh, apparently preparing lawmakers for the possibility of an electoral college tie, which would force the House to decide the outcome of the presidential election. What might we be facing, given the issues about mail-in balloting, just all the irregularities that are possible? What might we be facing on November 4th, and how might this election ultimately be decided? Join me now to talk about this as Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation, Hans von Spakowski. Hans, welcome back to Washington Watch. Well, thanks for having me back. Okay. Uh, well, let's start first with Nancy Pelosi sending this memo to, to members uh, about what happens if the Electoral College is tied and the House has to decide they need to make sure that they have uh, a majority of the state delegations to prevail. So let's start with that. How, how real of a possibility is that? Well, you know, at the moment, uh, Republicans have a slight edge in control, uh, I think. Um, but uh, that could change in the upcoming election. And what's interesting about this is that uh, under the Constitution, if the selection of the president goes to the House of Representatives because neither candidate has uh, won the 270 electoral college votes needed to be elected, uh, each state votes, uh, they only get one vote. So that means that the delegations within each state have to uh, vote, and obviously the majority will win, as to uh, who that one vote of the state will be placed with, whether it's the Democrat or Republican candidate. So that means the uh, right now, as you mentioned, the Republicans have a slight, uh, a slight edge. But would this be the, the Congress that is presently seated, or would this be the Congress post-January after the new Congress is seated? No, it's the election post-January uh, that is seated. So it will be the new Congress that will make this decision. So that uh, that is one of the reasons Nancy Pelosi focusing on some of these congressional races where, right. uh, like Pennsylvania, for instance, where I think the Republicans have a one-seat uh, margin in the majority there, which could make uh, you know a significant difference in the way the House votes. So let's talk about some of the other possibilities, some of the scenarios that we might be facing on November the 4th if the election is not decided on the 3rd. Well, the other thing that may happen is there may be a long delay if it's a close election in knowing the outcome because uh, the progressive left, election officials, state officials are all, I think, very unwisely uh, pushing as many people to vote by mail, uh, by absentee ballots, as possible. And there's two problems with that. One, um, election officials just probably may not be uh, equipped to handle the processing of all those absentee ballots. Um, Just look at what happened in New York State. They held a primary on June 23rd. They had an exponential increase in absentee ballots because they were encouraging everyone to do that. New York officials, uh, election officials, weren't uh, weren't in a position to handle that appropriately, and so it took them, if you can believe this, only six weeks, six weeks to count the ballots. So if we have that same problem in the November election, but in multiple states, it could be quite a while. The other problem that again might cause um, a dispute is the fact that uh, New York State election officials rejected so many of the absentee ballots that came in for not complying with state law and other mistakes and errors that they, they in essence, rejected one of every five ballots. Naturally, what immediately happened was litigation. Lawsuits were filed disputing the right of the election officials to reject those ballots. Again, we might have the same thing happen uh, uh, post the November election, which again could delay results and cause a court fight uh, over the the results uh, and outcome in particular states. So Hans, how much time do the states have? I mean, normally the president seated in January, but if we don't have the results in, I mean, how long could that go on? Well, they're supposed to 
their results by the first week in December, because the first week in December is when uh, the electors actually meet in each state, um, and states have to determine which slate of electors should be the ones meeting, the ones that pledged their vote for the Republican candidate. Yep. I think we may have lost him. Yeah, they've got to get they've yeah. got to get this done by by the beginning of December. So, but if it's protracted, like you said in New York, and they can't seat the electors because they haven't been able to count all the votes, what happens? Well, we might get to January with uh, most of the states counted and most of the electoral college votes awarded, but we may have enough states still outstanding that we still don't know the outcome of the presidential election. And it's just, it's on pause until all of that's counted and dis- and uh, determined? If there's no outcome determined by January 20th, a federal law uh, uh, comes into play which says that the acting president, until the election is determined, shall be the Speaker of the U.S. House. Interesting. Hans, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to have to talk more about this uh, later. Hans von Spakowski with uh, Heritage Foundation.